I went to the Three Men in the Basement comic book crawl today. What did I pick up? Let's take a look. Hey there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics with another video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. So today was the um, Three Men in a Basement organized a comic book crawl. I went to two of the three stops. It was too late in the day and too far from home to go to the third stop, but the first stop was great. Second stop, got a couple of things. Um, and it was just great interacting with people from the community. Um, Streetside Anthony was there, just grabbing up books like crazy. Um, Mike the Beast Benson and his dad were there, saw them again. Um, Paul PC, who, if you haven't seen it, check out, check out the video that Erod212 dropped on Friday, where they went over um, a CGC submission of modern books. He got some really great grades back on some great modern books. He was there, and Everett Otto and Roger Levesque were there um, organizing the whole thing. So I'm going to start with the second stop first. It was in a mall. Um, not too far from Hartford, and it was all dollar books. They kind of been picked over. Um, I did pick up a couple of early issues of Dark Horse Presents. Nothing really special about these, um, so th there wasn't anything great there. But the first stop was Comics and Coffee. They had some great books, great deals. Their prices were pretty good to begin with, and then everything in the bins was half off. I didn't even get to dig through the dollar uh, bins. So um, I picked up some nice books uh, and then I did pick up one wall book from them. So I was going through, I picked up, this is a, a book that I had um, on my video last week of DC Books from 1990. I had uh, focused on, it's Batman 457. It's the first appearance of Tim Drake as Robin. So I picked up three copies of that just because it was there and I just talked about it. Um, I picked up some other uh, kind of run fillers, some books from my 19 DC 72 collection, a couple of our Army at War, and one Young Love. Nice condition, good deals. Again, everything was half off sticker. It was it was awesome. Um, and then I picked up a whole run of Detective Comics. I picked up a bunch of these dollar books. They were all listed at eight, so I got every book for four dollars, and uh, then some other detectives. Just kind of filling back filling my detective run. Uh, so then it was, um, just a couple other, From Hell. Uh, if you're not familiar with this series, it was by Kitchen Sink in the 80s, written by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell. Eddie Campbell was the artist. Uh, this was adapted into a movie with, uh, was it Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder, I believe? So it's based on the, it's a fictionalization of the Jack the Ripper story, uh, written by Alan Moore. So, um, I don't, I didn't have every issue at the time. I don't know why. I picked up a Shazam. I think I already have this one, but it was a nice condition. Um, great price. And then, for some reason, this um, in version of Justice League of America, I did not have issue number one. So I picked up a couple of copies of that, including a sketch variant. Um, upgrade in the PC, um, Aquaman. Now, this is an interesting issue. You'll notice that it's uh, the tombstone of Arthur Curry Jr., who was known as Aqua Baby. Uh, and then this caused quite a conflict between Aquaman and Mira. Aqua Baby was killed by Black Manta in the comics. This was a, a 1970 story, uh, which was really, really dark at the time. And, you know, you, you look at the years there on the tombstone. He was five years old, 73 to 78. So, um, obviously, Black Manta is a huge character in that first Aquaman film. And I'm sure they're going to use him again in the second one. Could it lead to this kind of storyline? I don't know. But this is a, a nice quality book. The one I have in my PC is from my childhood. It's not as in nice shape. So I figured I'd do a little bit of an upgrade. Um, then just picked up some spec books. You know, the, the Demi Moore homage in Sensational She-Hulk. Um, First Vigilante, New Teen Titans Annual, number two. Uh, Power Pack, number one. A little bit of a spec book. This would be a great Disney Plus series. Right? Uh, Disney Plus, very family friendly. Uh, I think that Power Pack would be uh, a really cool addition there. I wouldn't count that out that right. 
This book is really undervalued. First Green Arrow solo title. Uh, four issue limited series. I think it's 1983-ish. Um, like some 40 years after his first appearance, he finally got his first self-titled book. Um, this one is, I haven't had in my collection. This is uh, the first appearance of the, the Omega Men in, what was this, Green Lantern 141. So that was a nice pickup. Um, pick this up, the penultimate issue of Forever People with Dead Man. Um, a nice quality copy, so I'll compare that to the one I have on my PC. Nexus number one. I actually just picked up on eBay a huge run of Nexus. Um, I, I, if you've watched the channel, I've been picking up a bunch of these here and there, trying to fill in the run. Um, this is the first issue in color. This is actually the first issue of Nexus in comics. There was the three issues of the magazine, black and white, um, that I have the first two issues of. I really have to get the third issue. Uh, then I picked up these two. These, these I really love. All-Star Squadron Annual Number 1, signed by Jerry Ordway, one of my favorite artists in All-Star Squadron, is one of my all-time favorite series. I loved this series um, back in the 80s. I guess I was in high school at the time. Roy Thomas was the writer throughout the whole run, and he really incorporated so many of the Golden Age DC quality Fawcett characters. Uh, that was really enjoyed that. And then this, All-Star Squadron 25. It's got some staining on it. is isn't the highest quality copy. But this is the first appearance of uh, Jade, Obsidian, um, Nuklon, who later became Adam Smasher, North Wind, Silver Scarab, Fury, and also signed by Jerry Ordway. Uh, so that was a really cool little pickup. And then the two biggest books I found this. This was half price. Marvel, um, now point one. This is the first Sam Alexander as Nova. That was a really cool pickup. And then... The one wall book. I was. I had settled up. I had spent more money than I really had intended to, and ready to move on to the next thing. I was just looking at the wall books, and I'm like, "Oh, that's a book you don't see too often." And this is a book that I've been looking for. So, one of the aspects of my collection is, and you saw three of the books in here towards that goal, is to get every DC comic from 1972. 1972 is the first year I started reading comics, and then. I also started to pick up, I want the top 10 Marvel key issues from 1972. And I put together a list about four or five months ago of what I thought those books were based on their value then. And obviously values have changed. Um, I think I probably still have, because I picked up some books that weren't necessarily in the top 10, but that have risen. And I had eight, I believe I had eight of them. Um, and... One is a huge, huge grail, very expensive, even in the lower grades. That's the most expensive Marvel book from 1972. I do not have them. That's Marvel Spotlight 5. Um, I do have Marvel Spotlight 2, Marvel Spotlight 4, Tomb of Dracula 1, Marvel Premiere 1, Hero for Hire 1, uh, Amazing Adventures 11, uh, Werewolf by Night 1, Tomb of Dracula 1. Uh, but this is a book that is very, very hard to find, and I got a great deal on it. Um, it looks pretty close to high grade, upper middle grade to high grade. And again, this is a very difficult book to find, and that is Night Nurse number one. So that is a great book to add um, to the collection, and it definitely is one of the 10 top 10 most expensive Marvel keys from 1972. So I was really um, happy to add that to the PC. And uh, now I think the only one I need is Marvel Spotlight 5. And so I'm going to have to sell off some stuff to afford that one. Uh, so that, but, and then who knows when we're going to see Ghost Rider could be as early as um, Multiverse of Madness. So I'm going to have to figure out when the timing of that's going to be right. But it was a great day uh, just talking comics with people. Um, it was quite a lot of uh, the day spent in the car, but it was worth it. Picked up some cool books. Let me know what you think. Um, and let me know what you think about the, uh, the comic book crawl. I know some of you were there. Love to hear from you. We had a great time. Unfortunately, I couldn't do the whole thing because I'm in New York they were in Connecticut heading east towards, like, almost close to Rhode Island. So, um, 
I got to the first two stops and then I had to get home and, and, uh, before, uh, I, I ate up the whole day. So maybe someday I'll be able to get an entire day free to do that. But today wasn't today. I just went out in the morning, bought some comics and let me know what you think. Again, like, subscribe, leave a comment. And until next time, enjoy your comics.